In this video, I just want to give you an example of what your stairs might look like if you're watering them with your sprinklers. And I do realize that some of you do realize what they're going to look like, but this video isn't for you. It's for the people who don't know what it's going to look like if you continue to water your stairs. Now, here's a set of stairs that was watered for at least a year by a sprinkler that was attached to a hose, and that sprinkler could have been moved. Just like this one, if a little more thought and planning went into the design and layout of the lawn sprinkler system. So let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of the damage here. We have a tread that is damaged along with the side of the stairway, and it looks like we have some type of a fungus growing on it. And you can see where it wouldn't have been that long before the rest of the stairway would have ended up looking like the right side of the lower step in this stairway either. And if we take a look at the back of the stairs, you can see where we got something growing on the inside. And once we remove the lower step, we can get a better look at the damage that's underneath that step also. And now that you have a pretty good idea what happens to wood, whether it's underneath indoor or outdoor carpeting or part of your beautiful wood deck, then you should have enough sense to prevent any part of your outdoor stairway from getting wet if you can avoid it at any cost. In this video, we're going to take a look at a stair design that was brought to my attention by one of our viewers who was wondering why they couldn't build a set of stairs like this one. So I went ahead and provided you with a moderate version and then a more extreme version and then definitely the most extreme version I could think of for the reasons why you're going to want to use bisecting angles or angles that will split the two changes of direction in half to provide you with the same size tread or steps and you're not going to get that with this one here where each one of the six steps on this side will have 11 inch treads and we'll even have an 11 inch measurement at this side all the way up but we're not going to have it over here and this is the problem you're going to run into if we don't run the angle right down the center of the bisecting stairway like we did here where you can see everything is 11 inches and the angle runs right down the center of the stairway. And hopefully that makes sense. Let's go ahead and take a look at another one here where we have another angle along with some steps on this side that are going to be a little smaller than they are on this side or in this stairway. But that's not going to be the case over here where we're looking at the same tread depth measurements going all the way up and down the stairway. And that would be true even if you were walking down the center of the stairway here. And for those of you who are having a difficult time figuring out what these floor plans would look like, I went ahead and created a couple of models that you could look at. So again, a stairway that should meet most building codes on this side, along with a stairway that's probably not going to meet your local building codes. Or should I say at least most of the building codes in the United States. And of course, with this picture, it's not too difficult to see the problem where we have smaller steps on this side of the stairway than we do on this side of the stairway. And of course, the last design where I took it to another level with this design here, you're probably not going to see something like this ever built unless it was going to have a guardrail here or something to prevent the people from walking from this side of the stairway to this side. And of course, this design here is using a 90 degree angle. Same as this one right here, allowing us to use 45 degree miters or half of the 90 degree angle to install these stair treads. And by now you should know a little bit more about bisecting angles and how they're used when building and designing stairs. Here's another one of those easy to build small stairways. And I'm not about to suggest it's going to be easy for everyone. However, I will offer to provide step-by-step -step instructions if I get at least 30 requests in the comment area. If not, then it's pretty straightforward. And if you don't like this one, I have a few more. I have a playlist you can check out, or I will put a link in the video description box to our website. 
where you can check out some of the other ones also. So you can nail all of these boards together or use screws or even bolt them together. But I would definitely recommend making connections at all of the points that I have on this side right here. And of course, this method of assembly right here can be used on the other side also. So I'm only going to provide you with details on this side. And in this example, I'm using 2x4s for all of these pieces here and 2x12s for our steps. And this model here has a seven and a half inch rise. And I would recommend using some type of galvanized or zinc coated or even stainless steel fasteners. And to calculate the length of this board here, you will simply subtract the thickness of the tread from the length of the riser. An inch and a half thick tread. We've got seven and a half inch risers. This board is going to be six inches. And you can just simply measure the distance from here to here and then use that measurement to add the individual height of your risers to the next boards until you reach the top. Next up, let's take a look at it from the lower section here and then swing around to the other side. And we will be installing two braces, one at the bottom here and then one at an angle. And this can go in either direction or you can cover the back with a piece of plywood. And I have more examples of that in some of our other videos. Wouldn't be a bad idea to check out a few of those different designs so you can pick up a few more tips and maybe even some of the benefits and disadvantages on some of the methods and products used. And I know a lot of people are going to say, hey, this all has to be built out of pressure treated lumber. And I don't necessarily agree with that all the time, but I will leave that up to you. Here is another question from one of our viewers who had a contractor build the stairway a little bit lower than it should have been and is now dealing with a puddle of water surrounding it whenever it rains. And in reality, you do have a few choices. You can regrade the property to allow the water to drain somewhere if you possibly can, or you can set up site drains if that'll help. But if it doesn't, here's another option. You can just simply remove the lower step or remove the lower two or three steps, whatever you need to remove, and install a concrete landing or even a sidewalk. But either way, if you can somehow raise any part of the stairway built out of wood or even metal that is going to rot or rust, then something like this just might solve your problem. Now there's something else I need to point out for some of you who might be living in areas where it snows and you're dealing with frost lines in the soil that could cause the concrete to heave or move upward or even get pushed around to create a variety of different problems for your stairs. So if you cannot use use concrete, but you can use gravel or another product that you might be able to enclose with some wood forms that could be firmly attached to the soil using wood or metal stakes, then something like this might solve your problem. So again, if you can't regrade the property or it's going to be too expensive to regrade the property, or you can't install site drainage because those could freeze in the winter time also, or you just don't have anywhere to drain to, then something like this just might work. And I would be glad to hear from any viewers who might have a better suggestion to prevent water from pooling around exterior stairs. In this video, I will provide you with something that might help you, especially if you can't get longer lumber. And I've already made a couple of videos like this, but thought I would make a newer video, something that might look a little better than my older ones. And you can see here where we have three individual stringers, one in the middle, one right here, and then two over here. And you can see here where I have the middle stringer on this side, I have it on this side, and then I don't have it on this side. I reversed it and put it on this side for those of you who might be using something like this in between two walls. So keep that in mind if you're going to use something like this. So if all you can get, for example, is an eight foot long board, then you can simply lay it out and modify it if you need to at the bottom or the top. And you can usually lay out one pattern, something like this, and simply set it on top of the next board and then trace it with a pencil. And I prefer using this method because it's going to allow each one of the stair stringers to be the same, even if you made a slight mistake. So you can see here where we have shaped the bottom of the stringer and used two bolts to connect it to the middle stringer. And we're going to do the same thing in the next section. 
up here and you can use as many bolts as you need to or simply nail it together with 16 D nails if you think that's going to work for your project. Keep in mind this is only a suggestion and you might be required by your local building and safety department to get structural engineering approval on something like this. And of course this top stringer here is shaped so that we can use a ledger. And remember, you're going to have to deduct the width of the ledger from the top here. For example, if I have a 10 inch long tread, then this is going to be eight and a half inches. And then I'm going to have an inch and a half ledger giving us 10 inches. So let's just go ahead and zoom in on the bolts. We have washers on both sides. That's pretty much standard when you're assembling something like this. And this method right here might require a structural wall with support blocking. However, there will be some situations where you won't be able to install a wall. And if that's the case, make sure that the stairs are strong. When you're walking up and down the stairs, make sure that they're not moving. Otherwise, you might need additional structural reinforcement. In this video, I will provide you with two things. One, a few designs you might be able to use. And the other will be a way to frame a square or rectangular shaped landing. So let's start with something that might not be that exciting. You could just simply come off the width of the stairway to create a rectangular or square shaped landing. Next on the list will be to pull that landing out a little bit. And then to do the same on the other side. So here you would have a step down area here, step down area here. And then since most stairways are going to be located by a front door, you can always use the landing as an entryway. Now don't forget, if you're going to build a landing, then you're probably going to need to raise the door. I wouldn't suggest cutting the bottom off of the door, but I would suggest raising the door. So this design here would allow you to come in the front door and then go off in either direction here or go up the stairway. Or we can go ahead and angle the landing. And even though I'm not going to provide you with information on how to angle the landing, or on how to build a curved landing. If you need a little more information on that, let me know. I'll be glad to show you how to do that in another video. And of course, we could always use different shapes on either side. And by now, hopefully you have a few ideas for your landing. Here is a money saving tip for those of you who are building multi-story apartment buildings and have limited or no training in architecture. And that would be to consider using one stairway and a small balcony to serve between two and four separate apartment units. So let's go ahead and get started with a couple of options. And our first one will be to have one stairway and a larger balcony. And something like this might provide room for a barbecue or even some outdoor furniture and would be the reason for building it this way. However, by simply moving the front doors from this side to this side, you can end up saving a lot of money and in some cases a few thousand dollars by putting the doors right next to each other so that you can create a smaller balcony. And even though we're only looking at two units here, I've seen the same thing done with four units. And that would be a situation where you'd go up the stairs and then enter an apartment from this side. And then, of course, this side, this side, and this side. And you're not just going to save money in the labor, the cost of materials. You're also going to save money in the hand railing. And sometimes the decking materials, if you're going to use those. Or if you're going to have a solid surface, you could save a lot of money with the waterproofing finished materials also. In this video, I will be asking the viewers to select one of these decks for me to design and provide you with a better idea how you might be able to build it. And you can do that by simply leaving the number of that deck in the comment area. And after about 10 days, I will see who the winner is. And then after I have made the video, I will put a link to that video at the top of the comment area in this video. And the only rule I would like you to follow would be to just leave one selection. And if you don't, then feel free to leave as many numbers as you want to, and I will just choose one of them for you. And unlike the presidential election held in the United States where your vote might not matter, keep in mind that if you are not part of the winning vote, then your vote won't really have mattered here either.
And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, let us know by hitting the thumbs up button or letting us know in the comment area.